In this video, I'm going to go over how to create a t-shirt design, just like what you see right here inside Adobe Illustrator. So I'm using two different fonts in this, and this one in the middle is called Langdon, and all the other fonts are called OSP DIN. These are all free fonts, and I will link them in the description of this video. So if you don't have them already, you might want to download and then install them before you get started here. So I'm going to start pretty quick and start with this arched Minneapolis type right here. So to create this, I'm first going to draw a circle. So in the toolbar here off to the side, there is a rectangle. And you just want to click and hold on that and then select the ellipse tool. You can also just hit L on your keyboard and that's a shortcut to bring that up. And I'm going to just draw a quick circle here. And I'm also holding shift when I do this so it maintains its proportions. If you don't hold shift, you won't get a perfect circle. Holding shift just allows it to make sure that the circle you're drawing is a perfect circle. It doesn't matter at all what kind of color this circle is because we're just using this as the baseline for the type, in this case Minneapolis, but feel free to change this to be whatever it is you want it to be. So now on our toolbar, there's T for type. I'm going to click and hold on this T to bring up this little side menu here, and we want to select type on a path tool. On my Illustrator, it's the third one down. It might move a little bit for you, but just select the type on a path tool. And once you do that, you're going to want to click on one of the outside edges of the circle. It doesn't really matter where, but it's going to automatically generate a type on this circular path. So I'm going to do that really quickly right here, and I'm just going to type out the word Minneapolis. And as you can tell, it is at the bottom here, which is not where I want it to be. So I'm going to select my selection tool, which is V. And I'm just going to hover over one of these four different endpoints, or you can also use one of these side endpoints here, and just drag this around until it is at the top. I'm also going to make sure my paragraph style up here at the top, and it's also under window and then type at the bottom here, and then paragraph. If you have that selected, you can also select a line center. The reason why a line center is pretty awesome is because later on, if you want to update the type or move the type around or adjust the tracking of the type, it'll always maintain its center, which will save a whole bunch of time. So with this type selected, you're going to want to type out your word and then make sure OSP DIN is the font that's applied. And the font size is going to change for you depending on how big you're drawing this. I'm just going to hit I on my keyboard to bring up the eyedropper tool and then I drop this other Minneapolis word that I've already done previously, which will just copy this font style. As you can tell, this looks really scrunched up together because it copied over part of the tracking I did before. To change the tracking here, which we're going to do a few different times in this tutorial, you just want to make sure that window type and then character is open. So I'm just going to open that up right here on the side. And then the tracking section looks like VA typed out with an arrow pointing both left and right. So right now it's set to negative 50. When you type out your word, it'll most likely be set to zero. So I'm just going to move this back to zero so we get a more stock tracking right here. As you can tell, this A is still really close. I'm going to adjust this tracking to be a positive number. A positive number makes the letters space out more and negative numbers bring them together. And when you select a letter, the tracking will always be applied to whatever letter is in front of it. I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time in this tutorial making sure that all the words are properly kerned, but it is something that I would recommend that you do when you're actually making stuff for this tutorial. I tend to do all the word kerning at the very end after the piece is fully done so I can kind of know what needs more work or what's working really well right now. So a little trick here that I do a lot of times when I'm working with type on a path like the circular path, as you can tell this takes up a whole bunch of room and it can be a little bit frustrating if you accidentally click on it. For example, if I have type in the center and I accidentally don't click on that type but I click near it, it'll select this whole path. That can get a bit annoying. So under the layer palette here, which is under window and then layers near the middle, I made a layer called arch, which in this case is just this arched type. So that way once I get my type done and I think it looks good, I can just hit the lock button. In this case you don't see anything right here, but just to the right of the eyeball. If you click there, it'll place a lock, which means I can no longer select that type, which is really nice if I want to move in other type like this right here into this spot that I don't have to worry about accidentally bumping or moving this arch type. And to create a new layer, it's just this page button. It looks like a page turning. It says create new layer. So if you make your own layer and name it something like arch or whatever it is you want to be and lock that down, you can just create a new layer where you can place all the rest of these type elements inside. I already have that made though. So I'm just going to delete this new layer hitting the garbage can icon right here. And next up, I'm going to do the city of lakes type. Remember, you can make this say whatever you want it to be. So I'm just going to hit T on my keyboard to bring up the type tool and then click and that'll bring up my type tool right here. So I'm going to type out city and then hit enter and then write of lakes. And I'm just going to drag this down a little bit. And do remember to keep your paragraph style on center. It just makes sure everything is nice and evenly spaced. If you have it on a line left, for example, this isn't the kind of look we're going for. So just make sure it's aligned to center. And this font in the middle isn't OSP DIN. It is actually Langdon. So I'm just going to hit this character drop down menu right here and go up until I get to Langdon. I'm going to select that so that new font is applied. And I'm just going to hit I on my keyboard right here to bring up the eyedropper tool and select this other one that I've already written out. 
so I can get the font size the same. So this font size is 145, but that's going to change a lot depending on your particular artboard size. And another thing you might have noticed changed when I did that is that the letting or the space between these two different words changed quite a bit. So letting looks like two A's with an arrow going from the baseline of one letter to the baseline of another letter. That is the measurement of how much letting this has. So if I increase the size of this letting, the words become more spaced out. And if I decrease that size, these tighten up a little bit. You can adjust the size of your own letting to be as big or as small as you want, depending on the kind of look you're going for. So I'm just going to hit I on the keyboard to match this once again by selecting this other type that I've done. But for you, you're just going to want to make sure that the letting is set to a decent number to get the kind of look that you're going for. So now I'm just going to move this until I think it looks relatively centered on this arch type right here. I'm not going to spend a ton of time doing this. I'm just going to try to get it relatively close. And next, with my selection tool, it's the black arrow. You can hit V on your keyboard to get it. I'm going to select this type, and then I'm going to hold down Alt on a PC or Option on a Mac and start dragging down. And once I start dragging down, I'm going to hold down Shift, which will make sure I just do it on this perfect vertical right here. That's just a nice way to make sure that when you drag down type, it stays in the same plane, so everything's lined up really nice. So I'm just going to change this type using the Type tool and then selecting over everything right here and type out Minnesota. I'm going to select the Selection tool right here so that it's no longer the Type tool that's active. And under the tracking, which once again is this VA symbol, I'm going to set this to zero. And I'm just going to hold Alt and Shift and size this down a little bit. So holding Shift, just make sure that you maintain the exact aspect ratio of your object, in this case, this font. And holding Alt makes it size from the center so that you're sure to size from the exact same center point you were before. This can be a little bit of a time saver when you're creating stuff. So once again, when you have your type selected, Shift, just make sure that the word is maintaining its proper proportion. If I don't hold Shift here, you can see that things get pretty wonky pretty fast. And then holding Alt makes sure that it sizes right from the center. This looks relatively similar to the type I have here, so I'm just going to click on it and then hold Shift and push it up until I get it looking pretty similar to what we have on the side here. And then with the selection tool still selected, it's the black arrow. You can hit V on your keyboard to get it. I'm just going to hold Alt and then Shift as I'm dragging to copy this Minnesota type off to the side here. And I'm going to double click on it to highlight it all with the type tool. And I'm going to change it to the number 18. And I'm going to click on it and then start dragging and hold shift while I'm dragging so that it stays on that same plane. And then I'm just going to hold alt and shift or option and shift on a Mac and size this down to be relatively similar to this type right here. And one thing I forgot to mention, this font right here shouldn't be Langdon, it should be OSP DIN. So I'm just going to change that really quickly. I'm going to scroll down until I get to OSP DIN, select that, and there we go. But feel free to use whatever font you want to to get the kind of look you're trying to achieve. That's totally up to you. These two fonts I just thought worked pretty well together and they give that kind of vintagey vibe that I like. So I went with these on this particular design. Now I'm going to click on this 18 and hold shift once again just to make it move perfectly off to the side right here next to Minnesota. And I'm going to zoom in by hitting control plus. And then at any time you can move around here too by just holding the space bar down which brings up the grabber tool so you can very quickly move around your artboard. And now I'm going to hit M which is going to bring up the rectangle tool right here. And I'm going to make sure my fill is set to black. And I guess this is something I should have done from the beginning. We want to make sure we have a black fill. In this case, it isn't a pure black, but that's just fine. And no stroke. To remove a stroke, just hit this little button on the bottom here that says none. It's on the right side, kind of below the stroke thing that you have selected. Selecting either the fill or the stroke will make these changes apply to that. So just make sure none is selected as you're doing this. And with this rectangle tool, I'm just going to draw a small rectangle above this number 18 right here. And I'm just going to zoom out really quick so I can kind of compare it to what I did before. I'm just going to make it slightly higher and then we should be good to go. So to bring this down below the 18, I'm just going to click on this using the selection tool. Hold down Alt, and then as I'm dragging down, I'm going to hold down Shift as well so that it stays in this nice vertical plane. Everything is lined up nice. And I'm just going to make sure that these look relatively similar in terms of how much space they have behind them. Sometimes I like to zoom out just a little bit to get a better overall look of what I'm doing and then kind of figure out what I need to adjust. So I'm just going to move this Minnesota type up a little bit. I'm just using my up and down arrow keys on my keyboard. It's a really quick and easy way to move around objects. I'm going to zoom back in by hitting Control plus, and then I'm just going to shrink down this 18 with these two bars selected. So with the selection tool, just click and drag and highlight over all this. And if you accidentally click on stuff like I did right here, this type above, just hold down Shift and then click on it, and that'll remove just that one particular item. So to shrink this, I'm going to hold down Alt or Option on a PC, start shrinking it down, and then also hold Shift so that the proportions stay the same. And this is looking pretty good. So I'm just going to use my side arrow key on my keyboard right here to bump this over just a little bit. Now I'm going to zoom out and then highlight over this once again. And with the selection tool selected, I'm going to hold down Alt 
And then as I'm dragging, I'm going to hold down shift, keeps it on this nice horizontal plane right here. And then I'm going to put it off to the side right here and then just let go. And I should mention that holding down alter option just duplicates that item. So it's a really quick and easy way to duplicate. Another trick, for example, if I were to move something over and then hold alt and shift just to move this over to the side and then hit control D or command D on a Mac, it'll just do that exact same movement with the exact same distance over and over again. So that's a really quick way to duplicate items in a row. For example, if you want to make a bunch of stars in a row, that's a really fast way to do that. But I don't need these, so I'm just going to delete them. And now all that's left is changing this 18 to be a 16 to match the design that I have off to the side here. I'm going to zoom out, and it looks like we're pretty close here. These are looking very similar. So at the end here, what I would do is make sure that all the kerning is pretty consistent throughout all these letters. Right now it's pretty far off, like this A to the P, and then the P to the O. The spacing is inconsistent, so always spend the time to make sure that these spacings are consistent before you send this off to a client or publish it or whatever it is you want to do with this. And once again, how you can do that pretty quickly here is just have the type tool selected. It's right here on my toolbar, or you can hit T on your keyboard, and then just highlight a letter. In this case, I'll highlight this F. And then in your character toolbar, which once again is under Window, and then Type, and then Character up at the top here, Using the tracking, which is a VA with a line pointing both ways, just change that number to be something either smaller or bigger. A smaller number will bring the letters together, so if I move from 50 to 25, it brings us together a little bit. I'll just move this to negative 100, so you can see that that moves it quite substantially. And then a larger number will push these out once again. And just do this for all the different letters until everything is looking relatively lined up and looking pretty good for you. An alternative way you can do this, but it'll actually make these no longer editable. I'm just going to unlock this arch layer right here so I can also move this arch type. And then I'm going to highlight everything, hold down Alt, and just kind of drag this off to the side. And then on the type here, I'm going to click on this arch type, right click it, and then create outlines. And then on the rest of this type here, I'm just going to select it all by holding Shift and clicking on each one of these objects, right click, create outlines. And then I'm going to click on these, right click, and ungroup for all these different elements right here. And when I'm done doing that, I'm just going to zoom in by hitting Control plus. And if you want to adjust your kerning this way, this is also a different way you can do it. That's a little bit faster, but your type is no longer editable. So don't do this step unless you're pretty sure you're good to go with whatever you typed. And I would also recommend always having a copy where the type is still live. So you can go ahead and edit that in the future if you need to. But this way I can just click on a letter and then use my arrow keys to kind of nudge things along until I think the spacing is looking pretty good. So this is a faster way of doing it. But like I said before, your type won't be live anymore. So to be careful, and on something like this Minneapolis word that's on this arch, it's actually kind of a pain to move it manually because I can't use the arrow keys to do this while well, I could, but it's a little bit less precise because this is on a path and now it doesn't look like it's quite on the right path. So you end up having to rotate and kind of adjust each of these letters a little bit more than if you just use the tracking on this live type right here. But that's really it for this tutorial. When you're doing stuff for t-shirts, remember, Simple is usually a better way of doing it. It's not to say that complicated designs can't also work on t-shirts, but nice, simple, and clean designs tend to sell the best. If you pay attention to the types of t-shirts that people tend to wear, it tends to be really simple stuff, just simple type or simple imagery, because it just appeals to a much wider audience. So kind of keep that in your mind. If you're creating a really complex, very artsy design, just know it'll probably hit a smaller demographic of people. But I applied this design to this t-shirt mock-up right here, just so you can see how it looks applied to a t-shirt. It's just a really simple design that looks pretty good because it's nice and simplistic and since it's a one color design right here it would be pretty cheap to actually produce if you ever wanted to get it printed but that's it for this tutorial if you have any additional questions don't hesitate to ask in the comments section feel free to leave your thoughts there and as always if you found this tutorial helpful please like and favorite and if you want to see stuff like this every week please subscribe i do my best to keep design content just like this coming every week thanks for watching